Welcome to AI Bedtime Stories. Today's story is called Swingin' at the End of the World. In the once bustling city of Neutreme, the end of the world wasn't marked by silence, but by a cacophony of jazz, laughter, and the occasional explosion. Here, amidst the rubble of what was once a vibrant metropolis, the survivors of various calamities, aliens, zombies, you name it, gathered once a year to celebrate International Jazz Day. It was a testament to humanity's indefatigable spirit and perhaps a touch of collective madness. The mastermind behind this absurd festival was none other than Louis Sachmo Simmons, a jazz musician whose trumpet had survived more apocalypses than most people's entire families. Sachmo was convinced that if the world was ending, it might as well go out swinging. Hence, he established the Swingin' at the End of the World Festival a black comedy of errors that became an annual beacon of hope, or at least entertainment, for the otherwise dreary lives of the city's inhabitants. As the story opens, Sachmo is preparing for the biggest performance of his, and possibly anyone's, lifetime. The stage was set in the crater of what used to be the city's famous park, now a makeshift amphitheater with an excellent view of the still smoldering skyline. The band was a motley crew, a drummer who had lost an arm in the last alien invasion, he played a mean one-handed snare, a pianist who claimed to be 150 years old, no one argued, and a saxophonist who might have been part zombie, the less said about his complexion, the better. This year's celebration was threatened, however, not just by the usual radioactive storms or the packs of wild, genetically modified chihuahuas, but by a new government decree that all gatherings were to be solemn and reflective, mourning the state of the world rather than celebrating it. Clearly, they hadn't met Sachmo. As the festival kicked off, government drones hovered above, broadcasting warnings. Sachmo, ever the rebel, raised his trumpet and blew the first note, a note so piercing, so vibrant, that it caused the drones to short-circuit and crash. The crowd erupted in laughter and applause, a sound more powerful than any drone's buzz. But the true climax of the festival came when the band began to play The End of the World Blues, a number Sachmo had penned during a particularly nasty alien hoverboard crash. Just as they reached the crescendo, the unexpected happened. A new alien craft, intrigued by the strange vibrations, descended upon the festival. The aliens, it turned out, were jazz enthusiasts themselves, who knew, and had been drawn by the music. With their advanced technology, they offered a deal, teach them jazz, and they would help rebuild the city. Sachmo, seeing an opportunity, struck up a bargain that would go down in history. What followed was the most bizarre cultural exchange ever, with jazz lessons for alien tech. Swinging at the end of the world became not just a festival but a turning point for Neutreme. Under Sachmo's leadership, the city began to thrive again fueled by a new hybrid of jazz and alien technology that became the backbone of the new economy. The government, seeing the error of its ways, declared International Jazz Day a national holiday, preferably celebrated with laughter, music, and the occasional alien guest. And so, every year, as the festival swung into motion, the citizens of New Treme danced and laughed, not just in defiance of their struggles, but in celebration of their uniqueness. The world hadn't ended, it had simply found a new rhythm, 